Welcome, this is the Marvel booth. I'm Ryan, AKA Agent M. I'm very excited because as you can see here, we're gonna talk about some really cool stuff. We're gonna celebrate Marvel's 80th anniversary here with the AM4 Marvel 80, a Speed Factory collaboration with our very own Chief Creative Officer, Joe Casada. But also, we're gonna have some cool giveaways. So uh, stick around, stay here, it's gonna be fun. I think we should get this started. Can I bring up Mr. Joe Casada, Chief Creative Officer of Marvel? I would also like to welcome to the stage legendary visual designer and sneakerhead Jeff Staple. <laughs> gentlemen, 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 how are you doing? Great. Doing great. Excellent. Awesome. Now, we, we've got some amazing sneakers right next to us. Yeah, they're, they're not bad. They're, pre they're pretty <laughs> cool. Uh, volume 1 and Volume 2 of the, uh, the AM4 Marvel 80s. Very exciting. And we got people snapping pictures and really cool stuff. Joe, what is your experience with sneaker culture? Because it's, for us, it, it reminds me a lot of comics culture in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, for me, my experience is zero. I had no, no, <laughs> no experience with sneaker culture whatsoever until two days ago when it, you know, the news broke about the sneaker. Was it yesterday? You, anyway, suddenly, sneaker culture. Hello. How are you guys? <laughs> uh, Jeff, tell me a little bit about sneaker culture because, you know, we come from comics and, you know, we have collectors and we have fans. We have people who follow artists and stuff. I imagine people follow designers and, and yeah. brands. Yeah. I mean, I happen to be a sneaker head and a comic head. So growing up, I knew that there was always a lot of similarity between the two. There's that just rabid, fervent fan base for both of them. You know, people lining up, going crazy, resell prices. People are really interested in the design process of both things. So there's a lot of commonalities. But Jeff, tell me a little bit about your history with Marvel Comics. You know, like, how did you become a Marvel head? I mean, going to my hobby shop in New Jersey. You know, every week I would take my allowance and I'd get X Factor, X-Men, Fantastic Four, you know, Wolverine, like all of those characters were just... And then the thing that was really cool is I would go home and try to make my own X-Men, like my new one with my own superpower. And I think, honestly, back from when I was 8 to 10 years old, that's what was the initial seed for me to get into creativity in any, in any you know, profession whatsoever. It just so happened that the sneaker culture happened to be my calling, and then I ended up getting very much into sneakers. It's got to be fun. Joe, you, you worked on X Factor for a while. Yeah, it's cool awesome. Stuff. I did, yep. Do you have some of Joe's, Joe's X Factor? Uh, probably, yeah. Good answer. Yeah. Great answer. No, for sure. It's awesome. Perfect answer. I like you. <laughs> Joe, what was your origin to Marvel? My origin? Yeah, like becoming a Marvel fan. Oh, becoming a Marvel fan. Uh, well, my dad bought me my very first Marvel comic. It was a Spider-Man book. Uh, and that sort of started me on the road to, to becoming a habitual reader, the habit, so to speak, uh, where I needed my Marvel fix every week, you know, going to the local candy. There were no comic shops then. It was just a candy store. Five right. and ten with the spinner racks and that kind no, of stuff? No, just a candy store with a, car with a cardboard box, and they threw everything in there. Marvels and DCs and Harveys and Archies, they were all mixed, so you'd have to go through and make sure that you were the first kid to get however limited numbers of Spider-Mans they had or whatever before the other kid did. Yeah. Uh, now, I want to think about sneaker culture and stuff because I, I think of Marvel having influenced everything that is popular. You know, you think of video games and movies and, and toys and everything that is designed out there feels like it's been influenced by comics and particularly Marvel. Jeff, how do you think sneaker culture has been influenced by Marvel and for, from comic art and pop culture? I mean, there's a lot of the same sensibilities, you know, like you have color, you have design, you have composition. Um, there's also a technological and performance aspect with shoes that I think is really interesting. And I always wondered, like, if it would be easier to design a comic book or a sneaker. And now you've done both, so maybe you can tell us which one was harder. Well, it depends. If you're talking about the innards of a sneaker, that's probably a lot harder because yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of human engineering that goes into that stuff. Right. We don't have to think about that when we do a comic, right? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't have to worry about somebody spraining their ankle <laughs> when they're reading an issue of, of, uh, of Iron Man. Uh, but the actual design, you know, it, it, this was a real learning process for me because I've never done this before. So, uh, you know, it, it was amazing working with Adidas and Foot Locker and Adidas Speed Factory. Uh, and the quick turnaround, because yeah. I would get prototypes and go, ooh, I didn't know that that's how that would print. or that's So they would just turn it around, and we'd get the new version. It was, it was yeah. remarkable. And that, that, made it, that made it easier, but the, they were, so the learning curve was shorter. Right. Uh, so the, the actual design of a sneaker was, you know, it's just designed to me. Yeah. But how it actually wraps around the foot, that was hard to get. Right. 
The yeah. Speed Factory part is the is the really amazing part. Yeah. Can I you mean, explain what that is? Because you know, traditionally, I've been designing shoes for like over a decade now, and typically, it's a two year design process. So you design a shoe, and it comes to market twenty four months later. You might see a sample a year later, but Speed Factory can take that down to like maybe even weeks. So if it's something like 80th anniversary and there's something like really timely, it could hit that. But even if it's like, if we do an initiative with like a high school kid and like we want to make that high school kid's dream sneaker come true, they could do that too. So it's not really about like only the marvels of the world, it's just about speed. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, we got to talk about the marvels of it all. Can we show the Marvel sneakers? Yeah, up nice and big up here. Uh, of course, we have volume one over here. We have volume two over here. And Joe, I remember you sent me the, uh, a couple of the photos of the designs as you were laying them out. Yeah. It, to me, I, I had never thought about how you lay out a sneaker because it's not a flat. It is a, like a flat design that you have to wrap around. And yeah. that, that's what you were talking about. Well, and that was the hardest lesson I learned. Like we, when we got the first prototypes, probably about two weeks ago, uh, it, on this is the volume one, right? So the way that I wanted the marble to wrap around the shoe was not working. And that's because I, I designed the shoe basically in a profile surface and then learned that you need to do it on a shell, sort of an overhead cutout of how it's going to actually wrap. And that was a real learning process, but it was fun, man. We had a, we had a blast doing it, and you know, there's all these little secret hidden things in the shoes and stuff, uh, you know, within the design and stuff. Like for for those that don't yeah, know, yeah. What's 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 this secret thing? Oh, well, that's my signature. That's oh, that's, that's not secret. Like, that's just that's just ego. But it's uh, <laughs> everyone who ego. wears one of these now is owned by Joe Casada. Right, right. <laughs> or they own me, one or the other. Uh -oh. But but you know, everybody sees Marvel. This is what I, this one is more of a sport design. This is kind of like if I you know. F more the kind of the sneaker that I would wear, sort of, you know, to go to the gym or something. And there's a there's a subtle uh, gradation here for for those. You know, everybody everybody's a Marvel fan, right? Very few of us are true believers. But if you wear these sneakers, you'll see it says believer and it says true. It's not very visible until you really look close at the sneaker. Uh, but that's something we threw in there. Yeah. <clears throat> the 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 dot pattern is indicative of you know old time comic book printing, the black and the red, the red, of course, of Marvel. Uh, we got the Adidas, <clears throat> the Adidas patch here in a reflective material. So you walk down the street uh, at night, uh, cars won't hit you or bikes. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, what else do we add on here? Uh, there's the Adidas and Marvel logos on the, on the tongue, a uh, little asymmetrical design. And also, I thought the dots were very indicative of Kirby dots. You know, my favorite artist of all time, Jack Kirby. So those are the, those dots are the the dot patterns are on both shoes, uh, so that they tie in a little bit together. Though they're both radically different. The, I so I, I call personally call this one the true believer. The other one I call the corner box shoe. I know Adidas has volume one, volume two, uh, but the corner box shoe again has the dot pattern uh, and then a multitude. Both by the way, left and right shoes are different, different corner boxes. Uh, of Marvel characters throughout the eras, from the very beginning to today, you know, from Fantastic Four to Miles Morales to, to Ms. Marvel to Captain America to Spider-Man, Black Panther, they're they're all on there, uh, and we go from you know black again, the Marvel 80-year logo, to uh, to the uh, corner box designs. And can I take this off here? I'm gonna yeah, take why it off. Yeah. You're, you're and then the here in, in reflective tape underneath is also True Believers. So you can see it on the patch there. Uh, it's just a little secret stuff there. Eh, okay. Um, and also that design is a little tip of the hat to my dad. Like I said, my dad introduced me to comics. And my dad owned a barber shop. And he was kind of artistic by nature. And you see that wall back there? Yeah. That's his, he collected Life magazine. And he decided for his barber shop that he, instead of just painting the walls a neutral color, he took his Life magazines, cut out the photos, and did these montages. This is all him. And, and he painted these white borders around it, varnished it, so every wall of the barbershop was covered in some of the greatest photography of all time. Wow. It was really, really beautiful. So the, the, the pattern of the, of the corner boxes, the way they're laid out, is like my dad's barbershop. So it was uh, my thank you to him for buying my first comic, introducing me to Marvel and, and just this world that I live That's in. That's amazing. That's the coolest story. It was the collage stuff here. Was that yeah. sort of his expression of art? Or yeah, that... no, my dad, my dad was artistic. Yeah. He, just, he just never felt he had an outlet for it. You know, he had to work at a very young age, at 13, and, and, and he never got to do it. But that's why he wanted me to be an artist, I guess. And uh, I mean, that was probably 
1968, 69, probably. Yeah. He was literally incepting your mind with comics. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Jeff, what was it? Was there a, like an inciting person or an incident or something for you that got you into thinking about design? About uh, sneaker design or comic book design? Sneaker design, but just just design in general. Because, I mean, I, it, it sort of flows, right? Yeah. There's a lot of different things as a young person that yeah. you think about. For me, it was my high school art teacher that really told me that, like, creative arts could be a profession that you could do for a living. I think me growing up Asian American and immigrant, like, I had to be a doctor or a lawyer. There was really no choice about it. And this one art teacher was like, no, you could actually do this for a living. And I'm like, get out of here. There's no way. And, you know, Michael Reed, shout out to him. He passed away. But, like, he really meant a lot to my life. Oh, that's very sweet. Yeah. And I'm sure many people here have those people in their lives. So they're really important. I want to backtrack a little bit about or actually go forward a little bit uh joe what was what was the was it a call that someone at adidas was like hey we want to do this with you what would walk us through what was that process it was just like yeah it, it was it was a it was a it was a call from you know from adidas and marvel you know we sat down for a meeting and, and i met with some of the adidas folks and uh talked to them on the phone through email and stuff about doing this uh and and really so i wanted to do it and then i realized the toughest thing about doing something that sell, you know, it's one thing if they ask you to do Captain Marvel sneaker, a Thanos sneaker, uh, uh, something that's more specific to a character. But when they ask to do something that is Marvel's 80th, it's like, uh, the whole thing. You know, yeah, Everything. the whole thing. So it's like, you know, I didn't want to focus on one character. So that's why initially the, the True Believer shoe was really sort of, it's a tribute to the fans. And, and the corner box shoe for me is a tribute to all the characters, as many as I could fit on there. <laughs> you know, there's a limited space. <laughs> uh, Jeff. When you heard that it was Joe who was going to be working on these yeah. and you got brought into this conversation, what was that like for you? I mean, you're a legend. As I said, I bought X Factor when I was young, so like being able to share a stage with you is amazing. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, I, I, I was interested because I knew that I could lend a hand in sort of translating what he was trying to do to like a sneaker head, you know, so like I, I, was, I was honored to be able to do this. I love this guy. He's great. <laughs> <crazy. laughs> you know, we always need more hosts, Jeff. If you ever want to come and hang All out right, with us, yeah. let us know. Uh, what was your first design project for sneakers with Adidas? Um, actually, just recently, we did this amazing thing called Future Craft Loop, which I helped to usher in Brooklyn. Um, it's, the, it's really the first 100% recyclable performance shoe. Uh, and Adidas is always pushing the envelope in like crazy ways. And so having me be sort of a face of that was really awesome, too. That's awesome. Look out for that soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe, you mentioned that this is the first time you've actually designed a, a real life sneaker, but you've been designing characters and worlds for Marvel for, for a long time. Do you remember the first Marvel character you designed a costume for or look for? You know, there, you know I, I think of X Factor, they had, you know, really cool looks. Yeah, I remember designing the, uh, the character Random for X Factor. Yeah. Giant arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Peter David creation. Um, I think that was the first thing I, I actually created. At Marvel, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Is there any similarity in like that way that you have to think almost three dimensionally about characters at times? Because sometimes you see them from behind in different ways. With the way you've now seen this sneaker. Um, no, there, there are radical differences because that that's designing a single character, right? A character that has to live and breathe on the page and has a personality. This is more of a of a design that has to encapsulate a feeling, a time, uh, a brand, uh, two brands, actually three brands. Uh, and uh, so, so you got to keep all that, you know, in mind. But also, you know, Adidas and Speed Factory and, 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 and Foot Locker, they make it easy also because as, you, as I designed these, they had templates and they said, you know, specific things that we can, cannot do. Like one of the cool things is that here in the Adidas patch, uh, we have, you can see Marvel's 80 years of Marvel, but the Adidas patch is here. It's just transparent. The, right. the, having the ability to do that enabled me to be more flexible with the design, you know? And all the different patches and shapes and things enabled me to sort of work around the design. So, so in this case, it comes with a template, some kind of a template, and the rules. You know, this is what we're trying to do. With Random, it was like, well, here's the name of a character, here's his powers, here's kind of his personality, go at it, right? So right. there's a lot more leeway. Sometimes having those narrow parameters, actually, I think are better because it focuses you to think a lot harder. And the other interesting thing is, as Joe was saying, you know, when you try to deal with the whole Marvel, you know, catalog and put it onto a shoe, it's almost like too much. So sometimes I'll have all these concepts that I want to put on a shoe and you want to get them on. But at the end of the day, the shoe still has to be like a wearable sneaker. Like it can't be like throw up all over the thing. You know what I mean? Like it's got to have a message that is clear. So that is the challenge of sneaker design. Yeah, I, I put these on for the first time, I think, yesterday. And I was like, oh, they're 
fully wearable where yeah. people can recognize everything about them. Yeah, they're yeah. really comfortable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're the, really comfortable. The thing that I geek out over is the angle of the L in Marvel is right. at the exact angle of the Adidas stripe. Yes, that was on purpose. And, yeah, <laughs> and I knew I knew that was like someone had to nerd out on that angle because if you don't wrap it right, yeah. it's off kilter and it's not parallel. Yeah, well that, that was, th those are some of the things that we went over, right? Exactly right. how to make, because I, I wanted the, the Adidas logo, the, 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 you know, the iconic look, to yeah, yeah. swoosh, yeah. right? Yeah, give yeah. you that sort of sports <laughs> feel. Right. Um, because yeah, it, it, it was two radically different shoes. Yeah. You know, sort of active and fun. Right. Uh, I, I was talking to some fans out here a little bit a while ago, and they asked, where do I get the shoes? So before we Where continue Where do you on, get the shoe? <laughs> Joe, you get the shoes. They are available today at the Times Square. Today. Locker. Wait, today. Right, go now. Right now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> Please don't leave right now. <laughs> right here, right now. Uh, there are a limited quantity at the Times Square <laughs> Foot Locker, but pre-orders will be available starting tomorrow, October 4th. Restock again on October 18th. Yeah. And, you know, we think about limited quantities sometimes for comics and rarities and stuff like that. Jeff, I mean, it, it's got. I've, I've watched sh like stores line up with people days in advance yep. for sneakers. It's, it's yeah. got to be super fun. Uh, I don't know if fun is the right I word. I think it's fun. <laughs> it could get dangerous too, so you know, really? come equipped. Oh yeah, Ooh. yeah. Please don't hurt each other. <laughs> right. There'll be restocks. Yes. Now I found out. Well, I kept hearing, you know, as I was designing and stuff. Well, we might do something with a chip, right? But yeah, I'm like, well, that's somebody else's business. Yeah. These have a chip in them. Yes. Yeah, the right? uh, NFC, NFC chip, chip in the tongue. In the tongue. Right. Right on the tongue, and, and and somebody demoed it for me. These aren't active right now, but if you if you put your phone, I guess with the Adidas yep. app, right, and you put it near the tongue of the shoe, it activates content. It tells you the whole story. Right, the it, shoe tells, it tells made. you the story of your yeah. shoe, what number it is in right. the, in the in the you know the number of that were printed. Yeah. Uh, all, all basically your shoe's birth certificate. Yep. But then they could also add content later on, right? So let's say you know I have a cover coming up at Marvel. And we decide that, well, we want to show it first on the shoe. If you got the shoe, you can go and check out the cover kind yeah. of thing. That's super cool. Or like if they wanted a link to this chat, maybe they put that yes. in. There. There's so many cool opportunities. Or your phone number. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Home yeah, address. I'll give it to you later. Uh, let's talk about the corner box shoe a little bit. Because as you guys were talking about, there's so many opportunities for characters in there, for storytelling in there. How many different characters did you sort of think about swapping it out? Or is it just like you knew going in, I wanted these characters? The, the corner box shoes... You, you can't see them all because they, they bleed out. But in total, I, I had to, because I to, each corner box, I, did, I had to restructure and design and age and stuff. There's probably like 48 total, I think, on, on the shoe, although 48 probably don't show up because of the, the bleed and, and, right. and the dot patterns and stuff. But I had to, for safety's sake, 48. <laughs> 48. Uh, also, with a true believer shoe, as you're calling it, for, for any of our fans who don't know, for people who are Adidas sneakerheads, what is a true believer? What does that mean in terms of our history, our culture at Marvel? That's a phrase that Stan Lee kicked off many, many, many years ago. Uh, and and, and to, to me, it symbolizes, you know, someone who's, who's a, you know, like a sneakerhead, a hardcore Marvel fan. Not just the movies, not just television, but from every aspect of everything that we do, starting with the comics to the video games, just someone who's an absolute true believer in our universe, a true believer in our heroes, a true believer in our content, in the way that pr we produce our content, and a true believer in, in sort of the mission statement of Marvel, the heroic mission statement of Marvel, and the way that we look at the world. Those people who are true believers know exactly, you, you know exactly who you are. You know exactly, <laughs> and it's something that Stan said many, many years ago. Funny story to that, I interviewed Stan a few years ago, you know, just uh, about a year or so, two years before he passed away, and we talked about this, and he said, you know, I never asked what we believe in. And I, and I was like, well, no, but it's very clear what we believe in. You know, <laughs> we, we, we believe in Stan's mission statement, Jack's mission statement, all these great creators that came in and created this great universe of ours. It's yeah, amazing. There's, like, the Stan soapbox where he's talking about our mission to entertain and maybe hopefully give you a message, give you something more to walk away with. And I think about that all the time, is everything that we do is... It goes back to Stan and Jack and Steve and Flo, and it's, it's important. So these True Believer sneakers, they, they mean a lot for us, uh, and hopefully they'll mean a lot for you guys. Um, Jeff, when you're designing a sneaker, do you, like, I, I look at this, and I think we were talking about, the, like, the bottoms of the shoes, and, like, all the parts of it are super yeah. cool, and they're unlike any other shoes that I have. How much does that go into, like, the overall structure of the sneaker for you as a designer? I mean, the way I think about it, it's like, it's kind of like designing a building or like a house. It's like architecture, but in the palm of your hand. So there's even stuff you could do on the inside, the sock liner, the shoelaces. 
There's even the little tips at the end of the shoelace, which is called the aglet. Like, you could even mess with that. Like, you can get really zoomed in and geeked out on this stuff. Yeah, I was asking about, like, the inside. Can we change? They don't have the technology quite yet <laughs> to do stuff on the inside because I was ready to print. I had stuff to print on the inside of this shit. Too. Yeah. yeah. On this, you know. But then I would feel weird wearing them because I would not want to wear out the inside of those sneakers. I'm taking these off the minute we're done here. <laughs> uh, they're going in a the box. They're going on my shelf. I was actually worried because of the rain. I was like, oh, should I wear, like, a beater into Comic-Con and then, like, put these on inside? You know, true sneakerhead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff, what, what, for you as a, as a designer and a collaborator, what makes for a successful collaboration? You know, like, what do you think about that you have to get done for yeah. the sneakers? The first thing, first and foremost, is mutual respect. First and foremost is mutual respect. That's number one. The two parties at the table have to respect what each other do, does, you know. Uh, and also there needs to be like a reciprocity in, in checking egos at the door. You know, you have two very talented entities, both know what the heck they're doing, you know, to black belt level, but you, you got to come together and make, there's probably some compromises you had to make, probably some compromises that Adidas had to make. I, I, I kept, you know, I would, I would email the, the, the Adidas designers and yeah. say, hey guys, I need your opinion. I need your take right. on this. You know how these print. You weren't and like, do you know who I am? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> No, but it, it takes a lot of that, like, uh, give and take to create, like, a beautiful shoe. And that's what a real collaboration is. How many sneakers are in your collection? Do you have a count? Do you, like, keep them in a sealed vault? I, they are in a sealed vault, and I, I stopped counting after 3,500 pairs. Wow. In the box? What? In the box. In the box. With a, little, with a little Polaroid photo in front of every single box catalog. That's awesome. Yeah. You, you can't, don't look like that. That's we do the same thing. I live yeah. in New York, It's just something though. No, don't, don't, don't act <laughs> all shocked. I have no room shocked. for 3,000 sneakers. How many comics you right. got? I had to sell most of my collection a couple years ago to fund a move, Joe. But how many did you have? I had like 42,000. That's no big deal. Wait. Hey, I know, I know all about your my Mylar, case. you know, like acid-free backing. Like, you guys totally go crazy on this stuff, too. Yeah. <laughs> Same difference. Yeah. Is there similar in the sneakerhead culture? Like you mentioned, you have them in a sealed vault, but even past that, like I had a friend who was a sneakerhead and he gave me a pair of sneakers and they were in like a special protective box and there yeah. was like a lining in the box. Is that. You know what the irony of sneaker collecting is? If you don't wear sneakers, they deteriorate on their own. They need to be worn and flexed. If they don't, the, the outsole just, cr not on these probably, but on the older shoes with EVA foam, they just crumble if you don't wear them. So okay. th it's ironic. Like, you have to use them to keep them alive. All right. Now, I have to ask you a question. because we're talking about what, is, what is the most sought after, most expensive collectible pair of sneakers? Like, like, the, like the Superman number one? Like the Superman, Superman number one? Or Action Comics or, or Amazing Fantasy 15. What is that in sneaker culture? I mean, the one that comes to my head is, like, there's a pair of Adidas that Muhammad Ali actually boxed in right and i saw it at the archive in adidas headquarters and it's signed by ali and everything like wow. that's probably priceless to be honest well, it, outside of something that's been worn that's a one yeah, of yeah, a kind yeah. just in general like somebody mass like adidas nike somebody mass produced a right. sneaker and it's really rare and it's and it's really sought after uh, that be? you know what probably back to the futures you, you know the oh, auto yeah, 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 yeah okay those are pretty rare that makes sense yeah yeah so cool. Uh, where do you guys see the, the potential for the collaborations, the crossovers between Marvel, comics, sneaker culture, all of that? Where do you see it going? I mean, you mentioned some of like the little details. I got an idea. <laughs> all right, hit it. So if Speed Factory continues on the trajectory it is, I, I imagine a world where a kid comes in and he's like, I'm all Captain America. That's all I want. And he can choose his own corner box and make his own Captain America shoe, and it, it's ready for him in like a week. Right. That would be amazing. Right. So, so basically, you would you would you would you would give them that ch that kid the choice of yeah. here's a bunch of different iconography. Right. Here's where you could put it. Here's how you could design it. Kind of like what I had, except starting less from scratch and more like here's yeah, individualized. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yep. Yeah. That's I'd, possible. That's within our reach. That'll happen within our lifetime for sure. I, like is. So you've, that's like the next big thing. Joe, what's the next big thing for, for comics? I mean, I remember, you know, we see a lot of our artists drawing on boards, and now it's a lot of digital drawing. Where's the future for comics creation? For comics what? I'm sorry? Creation. Oh, man, come on. Seriously? That's a really broad question. Uh, every year it becomes bigger and bigger, you know, uh, and our reach gets bigger and bigger, you know, whether it's through digital, through print, through TV, movies, you name it. You know, the, the sky's the limit. I, I remember sitting... You know, at, at San Diego Comic Con, you know, maybe my first or second year as editor in chief, and I would get questions like, "What's the future for Marvel?" And I would say, "Complete and utter world domination." 
And I wasn't joking. <laughs> I'm serious. It was before Disney or anything because I, you know, I kind of had a sense of what was coming. Uh, you know, I, I wanted us to be a lifetime, a lifestyle brand. And I think here we are. You know, we're, we're, we're a life, you know, Adidas has been a lifestyle brand for a very long time. Foot Locker has been an iconic right, yep. retail location yeah. for a very long time. Marvel has been around for a long time, but we, we, we are now an iconic brand Absolutely. considered, you know, with, with all the rest. Iconic indeed. All right. Uh, I had mentioned we were going to do a little bit of trivia. Do I have a couple of victims that I'll bring up on the stage? Uh, I have Joe and Jeff. They have some goodies. Uh, we'll answer a little trivia. So you're our first victim, sir. All right. What All is right. your name? Ryan Michael. Ryan Michael. Where are you from? Hudson Valley, New York. Hudson this guy's Woo! a ringer. This guy's a ringer. I think he's a ringer. <laughs> he's, got, I look, he's a true believer, I think. He is. All right, Ryan Michael. This is a really difficult question. You ready? Steal yourself. Okay. Where is Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, from? Queens, specifically Forest Hills, Queens. Boom! Nice. Nailed it! Boom! That's my uh, boy. I would like to give Ryan Michael name, something. Right? Do uh, we have something? Yes, I have a, a Foot Locker gift card valued at... <laughs> wow. And, uh, yeah. Have fun with that, Thank Michael. So That's much. awesome. You got Thank it. You. Give it up for Ryan Michael. All right, please, next victim up here. Sir, what is your name? AJ. AJ, where are you from? Trumbull, AJ. Connecticut. AJ! Trumbull, Connecticut. I've never heard of Trumbull, Connecticut, but I like it. It's you got to get name. out more often. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now, this one, I would love to hear a little acting, a little enthusiasm in it. What does the Hulk say? Hulk smash! Yeah. yeah! Give it up for AJ. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. All right, here you go. Here's your gift card. Thanks a lot. Congrats. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. You now have, have, you have X number of dollars <laughs> at Foot Locker. Nailed oh, it. Yeah. Great job. All right. Last but not least, sir, what is your name? Douglas from the Bronx. Douglas from the Bronx. Who's here from the Bronx? I'm sorry. Uh, All right, I see Ryan, Kobe Ryan, Kobe. it's the Bronx. The Bronx. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I got a couple here. I feel like you're going to know all of them. Okay, I, this one uh, is simple. It's easy. Who founded the X-Men? Professor X. Professor Ooh. X. That is Look right. Look at this. Douglas nice. from the Bronx. Nice one, man. All right. Congrats. Yeah. Another oh, cool. wonderful <laughs> gift card. There we the go. The Foot Locker. Nice. People come. They hang out. They get free stuff. They get yep. free stuff. Great. Once again... These shoes, the AM4 Marvel 80s, Volume 1, Volume 2, they are available today at the Times Square Foot Locker. Limited quantities. I don't know how many that is, but we took away three, <laughs> four, five of them. So minus five. Uh, then you can pre-order starting tomorrow, uh, October 4th. Restock will be again on October 18th. Uh, Joe, you've been doing this collaboration. Anybody you want to thank? Anything you want to say? Yeah, listen, I, I mean, there's so many people to thank. Cause I just, I just want to, I, I got to make it global. So I want to, first of all, thank, thank the folks at Adidas, the designers at Adidas, everyone at Adidas Marketing. It, it, they, they made this. It, it, the only, the only reason it did, any part that didn't go smoothly was on me because I was behind on deadline. <laughs> so I want to thank those people because it, they were just great. I want to thank the folks at Foot Locker, also fantastic to work with, and the Speed Factory people who kicked butt. Really, I mean, they were, they, were, they were cranking out the prototypes as fast as they could and made my life a lot easier. So I want to thank, and thank you, sir, for being yeah, here with thank us. You too. You know? Jeff, anybody you want to thank? You're part of this, too. This, is, yeah, this man. has been fun. I mean, this is a dream. As a kid, I'm sitting in front of three institutions here that really made up most of my childhood. Marvel Comics, Foot Locker. Every, every paycheck I got, I went to the East Brunswick Mall in New Jersey, bought comic books and bought Foot Locker shoes and Adidas, my sneakerhead love all culminates on the stage. I could pretty much die now. I'm good. 